Justice Democrats, the progressive organization that helped elevate Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is throwing support behind several candidates looking to take on Democratic incumbents. Their latest endorsement is Morgan Harper, who is challenging four-term Congresswoman Joyce Beatty of Ohio. They've also endorsed candidates running against Congressman Dan Lipinski and Richard Neal, both who are Democrats. The organization says they want to usher in a new generation. Here to discuss that campaign is D.C. Bureau Chief of The Intercept, Ryan Grimm. Welcome back, Ryan. We appreciate it. Good to be here. So we've got these progressive, uh, we got these progressive challengers. How is, what is your view on the following of these challengers, the viability of this going into 2020? The constant criticism is the way we flipped the House was we focused on moderates who were able to appeal to Republican candidates. Does this send a contra message? Well, it, that's, it's, it's a strange argument that people make because uh -huh. it's saying like, everybody ought to do this one particular piece of the strategy. Yeah. It'd be like telling the Sierra Club, look, it's, it's good that you care about the environment, but actually like what we need to do is win the House majority, and so we need to put all our energy uh -huh. in swing seats. Justice Democrats is doing something completely different. You know, they believe that the House Democratic Caucus, as it's currently constituted, isn't able to meet the, the challenges of the 21st century, and particularly uh, climate change and yep. runaway inequality. And so they're trying to change the nature of the Democratic Party. They're, they're not trying to win a House majority. They'd like to see a House, House majority, but that's not their objective. Same with Sierra Club. The right. Sierra Club would like to see a House Democratic majority, uh -huh. so would Planned Parenthood, uh, you know, so would NARAL, so would the ACLU, but that's not their, that's not their mission. Absolutely. Right. So w what their mission is, is to find, in general, uh, blue seats that have a, a moderate or conservative Democrat who's not in sync with that district and get somebody who is in sync with the district and, and try to oust them. Like, why, why on earth Joe Crowley representing yeah. the Bronx and Queens when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez could be doing it? I, I mean, don't even that, disagree That's with the you, argument. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and, and how is that project working? So, I mean, it's still in its infancy. Last cycle was the first cycle right. where this was tested out. AOC is obviously the most high-profile victory. Do you think, I mean, you know my view of this question, what measurable impact has that had on the caucus itself? Well, they, I mean, we're here talking about it and we're talking yeah. about them constantly. Uh, it was almost a complete failure. You know, if, if Ocasio-Cortez hadn't won, they still would have had Ilhan Omar, Rashida uh -huh. Tlaib, Ayanna, Ayanna Presley. It's not, maybe Ayanna Presley doesn't win if AOC doesn't win and create that momentum. Yeah, that's a good but point. But also, uh, Presley, Tlaib, and Ilhan Omar had their own bases as well and may have won possibly without Justice Democrats. You know, Justice Democrats was all in on Ocasio-Cortez. Their initial idea was that they were going to um, back 435 people across the yeah, wow. spe political spectrum. They, they didn't come anywhere near mm -hmm. doing that. Uh, th they're actually doing a little bit better this cycle, I think, in terms of uh, viable races. Like I think Morgan Harper in, uh -huh. in Columbus running against Joyce Beatty, who's a Finan you know, who's on the Financial Services Committee has been pr had a pretty bank-friendly record, and in the past would have flown under the radar. Like once, once a member like that wins wins a, a safe seat like that, she's You're done. She's good for life. Yeah. yeah. Um, and and now the House is understanding. Okay, actually, we're not we're not good for life, and these compromises that we're making uh, might end up costing us. What do you think that, I mean, in terms of moving the Overton window on this, is this the only really way to do it within the Democratic primary, I mean, within the Democratic yeah. Party? I, I think you look at the same thing in uh, Republican districts. You have congressmen who are so out of step with their, their, they have constituents who are more loyal to Trump than their own congressmen. And so part of the whole, you know, the reason it failed is because Steve Bannon and his organization wasn't very right. good at this. But there was something to what they were getting at, which is let's elect people who actually believe what their voters believe, right. rather than people who are beholden to these interests. How is I, I, I mean, the real question is, yeah. how does that work? How does it move the well, order their, to their, their theory yeah. is that a lot of these members are beyond persuasion, yeah. or at least they're so far beyond uh, the realm of persuasion that they're, you can't even reach them at this point. So somebody like Richie Neal, so the Justice Democrats endorsed Alex Morse this morning, mayor of, what, Holyoke. Yeah. Um, so very serious candidate, and actually not a kind of dogmatic lefty like, uh -huh. a, like a lot of the other Justice Democrats are, so it's showing a little bit of pragmatism. To them, they're, they're kind of saying it's more important to them to beat Richie Neal, who's kind of a conservative, he's a chairman of the Ways and Means Committee, he's, he's bottling up uh, Medicare for All, he, he 
resisted pressure to go after Trump's taxes. So they're saying it's more important to them to, to kind of take him out than it is to have the perfect kind of candidate that, that aligns with everything that they believe in taking him on. And mm -hmm. that, that's kind of a new development for, for Justice Democrats. And so hmm. the idea is that what, you're not going to persuade uh, Richie Neal yeah. with rallies outside of his office right. or with letters to his office, or letters or other kinds of pressure. You just actually have to beat him. Then eventually maybe you can persuade some of the others if you beat enough of them uh -huh. and they see that they ought to change. But as of now, what they've shown is they're, they're willing, willing to go to war with the squad and with uh, Justice Democrats yeah. rather than try to, try yeah. to accommodate Makes them. Sense. Well, and you see a lot of hand wringing in this town in particular about like, oh my God, I was seeing these crazy lefties and now the Republicans are going to tag all of us as crazy socialist lefties and they're going to run against AOC and we're going to be destroyed. I don't quite see how that works for them. You know, th we heard this in 2018 that, oh no, uh, AOC and others are calling to abolish ICE. And now here comes this caravan, and the, the, the country's going to think that the Democrats are for open borders, and we're going to lose. And in fact, in these suburban districts, which are realigning towards Democrats, which are precisely the districts that Pelosi's of the world say that they're nervous, the AOC's of the world are going to uh, panic. Um, in fact, they moved even further towards Democrats. Like they, you know, when, when you polarize a, the debate around immigration in the suburbs, that tends to work for, for Democrats. Same with, uh, same with, same with gun control. Mm -hmm. And so what the Justice Democrats and AOCs can do is they, they polarize these debates. And so they allow people who are casually following politics to then very qu quickly form a heuristic, okay, Democrats, immigration, okay. Republicans against the Democrats for it. And wh whether it's abolishing ICE or open borders, or whatever, like they, people don't really believe all the rhetoric that comes from I, I could from not these agree parties. with you more, which is that these are signaling actions and right. why it's brilliant to do it, which is that concentration camps gets people talking about immigration, right. which gets people saying, hmm, maybe I'm not okay with this. I'm not saying I'm necessarily agree. Well, it gets the discussion started exactly. about the treatment. And then you, it, and it gets that discussion. And then it comes down to, like you said, a heuristic of, you know, close, open in a suburb. Right. People will generally tr uh, trend open, and I think that's a smart political strategy behind it. Another thing I do want to talk to you about, I mean, we talked about this when we interviewed you about your book, which is that there's a lot of discussion right now about electability, electability. Mm -hmm. It's all anybody can talk about. Number one thing that a Democratic voter wants. Your, your thesis is that progressives are actually quite electable if given the chance. I want to give you a chance to respond to that. Wait, Ryan, yeah. you wrote a book? <laughs> I did write a book. Everybody <laughs> out there should buy 10 copies of it. Agreed, agreed. Um, yeah, and there's that. So, First of all, you have to look at the track record of the people who are gauging electability. Uh -huh. You know, these are the same people who told you that Walter Mondale was the electable choice, told you that Dukakis was the electable choice. They told you that John Kerry was the guy who couldn't have his military credentials undermined by, by Republicans. This is, a, this is a war hero. Um, so they, they told you that, look, Hillary Clinton is, you know, the most experienced candidate that's ever run. She's entirely electable. And, and that became the thing, the reason that you were voting for her. Biden has that now. People don't agree with the polls say Democrats don't necessarily agree with him. And he has the highest numbers of people who say they absolutely won't vote for him. Interesting. Which you would think actually plays into electability if uh -huh. people are saying they won't vote for you. Uh, but Democrat, Democratic primary don't don't think that through. There's a, there's a real condescension to their to their thinking. They, they say, "Well, I don't like this guy, but these bozos in the diners, you know, they probably like this lunch uh -huh. pail Joe Biden guy," and they have polls that will back them up at this point because you know people aren't paying attention. There's a little bit of the Obama halo. There's he's this he's got the Scranton thing going on, and so when he's matched up against Trump, yeah. he does poll ahead of him. But what happens when he's exposed for three months in the general election as being for NAFTA, for TPP, you know, for all the things that cost Hillary Clinton yeah. so dearly in Minnesota, Wisconsin, I saw that Michigan, answer Pennsylvania. In the debate right. about and I'll more. renegotiate TPP, and I was like, oh man, Trump right. is going to eat this right. guy alive. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Just not, Absolutely. It's not going to happen. I mean, and yeah. it seems like the polls that show Biden beating Trump, people are like, well, this mm -hmm. is the gospel. Yeah. And the ones that show Sanders beating Trump, people are like, well, right. yeah, here's a million reasons why that's not real. Right. And and so if if you look at what the states are that you need to win, uh -huh. and you and you think about Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, Michigan. Think who? Well, who can win those? Okay, I can see an argument for why Biden. He's from there. 
He's got there's some lingering affection. Um, but like you said, Trump is going to hammer him relentlessly on, on the trade question. Uh -huh. You know, trade is the thing that uh, people in that region believe so you kind of stole their futures from them. Well, they're right. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> and, but, but they, but they yeah. also believe it. Yeah, like, yeah right. You know, <laughs> and the only so, one people right. who don't believe it work in think tanks here right. for some reason. No, and, and, yeah. and they're blind to it. I yeah. mean, that's right. the thing is yeah. the media was so completely blind right. to how much, how important trade right. was going to be in that election. Right, and the pivot counties, if you look at uh, Pennsylvania, for instance, Erie, and then also Northampton yeah. County, Lehigh Valley, you know, it was Bethlehem Steel collapses. Yeah. You know, you have like the the entire. You know, that that's the story of the collapse of the manufacturing industry, and then uh, you know Obama does okay there as it collapses. Trump does better there. That's where Bernie held his Fox News uh -huh. debate town hall, which where everybody was surprised, like, wow, what what's up with all of these kind of retired steelworker types <laughs> that like Bernie? Oh, well, it turns out they're actually you know there's a lot of populism in these old school uh -huh. union folks. But they feel like you know they had their uh, their futures and their children, more importantly, their children's futures, kind of ripped out from under them. Yeah, I, I think that the strongest thing that Bernie Sanders has going for him in a general election is that he has been so critical of the Democratic Party because right. yeah. people feel like, and I would say rightfully so, the Democratic Party looked towards greener pastures and essentially left them behind. Yeah, Trump has, if you notice, he has the hardest time making fun of Bernie. Yeah. He does, yeah. Like he can just slice and dice through the entire field. But when he gets to Bernie, like for, there's this, there's one great clip where he's yeah. like, Bernie, I kind of like Bernie. He's yeah. got a lot yeah. of energy. Yeah. And he's like, but not the kind of energy you'd like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's different. And it's like, well, what? Like, you think, like, you're usually so good at this, and you've yeah. completely lost That's a good the thread. Point. I think All right, Ryan, we got to leave it there. Thank you, Thank Ryan. You so much. Get his book. <laughs> we'll have more rising after this.